share with you guys today a good and detailed look inside of Gentle and Classical Creation Agricultural Science. Gentle and Classical has several different options for science curriculum. For a Charlotte Mason style science curriculum that incorporates nature study, living books, language learning, as well as hands-on opportunities. I have used both their Nature Volume 1 as well as their Nature Volume 2 in my homeschool and I have videos on both of those. This is their newest release and it's a little bit different. It's the beginning of a new series that is called Creation and it is aimed at a little bit older students. So this is targeted mostly at third through sixth grade while the other Gentle and Classical Nature programs can be more used with pre-K through second grade. They can also be used with older students but the content of this one and the vocabulary or writing and reading expectations are going to be a little bit more meaty and that's why it's more for mid through upper elementary and you'll understand more about that as we get in. Now I am a Gentle and Classical affiliate so when you purchase resources from Gentle and Classical through my link which I will leave down in the description below I do earn a commission and I really appreciate all of you guys who do use my links Thank you so much. Um, thank you for supporting my work here on YouTube. But let's dive in to seeing what you can expect in agricultural science. First of all, I'm just really excited with the topic of this, getting to learn about farming and food systems and agriculture. There are so many different amazing topics in science. I think science is just an incredibly fascinating um, subject area but there aren't all that many farm related studies. So I love the topic of this first of all. Now, if you are familiar with Gentle and Classical Nature, there's definitely going to be some aspects of this program that are familiar, and then some that are a little bit different. Now, this is part of the teacher's guide. So you can download the free teacher's guide on their website, and you can see the scope and sequence right off the bat. Now they do suggest particular months that you know that this is kind of ideally designed for beginning in September ending in May. So some of the topics will kind of line up with those seasons or those months if you live in a temperate climate. Now I don't live in a temperate climate. I don't have seasons um, but even with living in the tropics all of these would still be relevant and worthwhile topics. So I would not get overly or hyperly concerned with lining this up to whatever season you're in. Um, it's still worth learning um, whether or not you have these seasons or even in a different season, that's also doable. Um, and they also give you a look at what topics you're gonna be covering. So you're covering amazing practical topics, agroecology, food systems, orchards, fall crops, harvesting, preservation, overwintering animals, planting your garden, poultry, animals as producers, working animals, planting, plant growth and, growth and photosynthesis, soil health, summer crops, herbs and flowers, grains, meat animals, and ruminants. So that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot right there. You get a little glimpse at your read alouds, the poems that they suggest that your child memorize, your projects, and then there is a nature study element. Now, You'll see as we go through this, you do not need to include every single element. This can be treated like a menu, a feast, and maybe some elements you um, are best fit for your family and other ones maybe you don't need for your family science studies this year. Now, most of what you need to accomplish this curriculum is included when you purchase the curriculum, but you do need a few books. These are gonna be your two most important books that are referenced every unit throughout the year. The farm that feeds us and farm anatomy. So really just these two are your main core books that you need. I don't have either of these. I have looked at the sample, especially of this one. It looks really good. Um, and the anatomy series is very uh, famous within homeschooling. Then there are a couple of other farming related picture books that you might want to include, especially if you have children younger than third grade and you want to have these as repeated read alouds. I have this one and you know I love the Kate Messner books um, and all of these honestly look great. Um, so with younger kids you can include those. If you want to be including classic literature, these are the options that they give for you to read throughout the term. Now again, 
you can opt to do this, and these are great books, uh, or you could decide we already have chapter book read-alouds we're doing, we don't need to incorporate our chapter book read-alouds with our science, and you could skip these. Um, but you have this option right here, and these are all options related to growing, farming, um, and then another book options, these are really only if you have children older than sixth grade, middle schoolers you're trying to include. These are books to give projects and ideas and just up the challenge a bit. So there is the books that you might want to, or that you need to, or you might want to include. And then when you dive into the teacher's guide, this is what a unit guide looks like. It's very simple. It's just this page and then the back side of the page. That's all you have in the teacher's guide. Um, and if you're used to gentle and classical teacher guides, this is gonna become more and more familiar to you. One unit is intended to last two weeks. So we have 18 units for a 36 week school year. They include three levels of memory statements. Level two is most likely the level of memory statement that you'll be aiming for um, with the third through sixth grader. If you have someone on the older end, you know, sixth through eighth grade, maybe you'll be going to level three or an advanced fifth grader. If you have a younger sibling, maybe you're gonna go with the level one memory statement. So they just get slightly more complicated. If you want to include a little bit of foreign language vocabulary, they have those three right there. Then you have your core books. What are you supposed to be reading this week? And then if you are including nature and projects, they give you just a little reminder. Hey, for the first six units, we're gonna work on this project, a phonology wheel. Um, we're gonna work on learning our first nature poem and we're going to start recognizing our first wildflower, a yellow wildflower. All of that is included in the student notebook, by the way. What's very cool is on the back side of these pages, they give you a little bit more ideas. They give you an additional book menu. So you can take this to your library or if you're wanting to expand your home library and get some more farm or plant related books, um, you can you know, pick out a couple. This does not mean read all of these books as part of this unit. This does not mean read all of these books. These are ideas and options if you want to go farther. They are not necessary, but hey, if your library has them, if you're a family that loves books, this gives you some direction of where to go. You can also, of course, just see what, what books does your library have on food systems? What books do they have on general agriculture? Then this is a really fun section, your explore more section. Sometimes they'll give you um, links to uh, videos or websites that you can check out. Sometimes they'll give you hands-on activity ideas and you just treat this like a menu. See what might work for your family. Yeah, they'll give you field trip ideas. Now the idea with this is not necessarily that you are working on science every single day. The idea is that you're covering this one unit over two weeks and you're typically scheduled to, like the way they suggest it is to do two days of science a week. So you'll be covering this one unit over four days. Now remember that you can download this teacher's guide for free on their website. I'm just giving you a quick little glimpse at a few of the units. These book menus are great if, like us, you love reading. I absolutely loved using Nature Level 2, um, the Volume 2 of Nature in our homeschool. And I'm not using this right now. I feel like my boys are still too young for this, although my oldest son has recently become very interested in farming and in growing food. Um, and so actually, I think he would be really excited about these topics. But we're gonna hold off on this until they're a little bit older, but I'm already getting excited about using this just looking at it. All right, now I want to show you some other elements of the program. I printed out some of the pages from the student notebook. And the student notebook is where you're going to notice a bit of a difference from Nature Volume 1 and 2. It's definitely beefier, it's wordier. This is where you're going to see that, yes, this is probably gonna work better with more of a third grade and up versus with younger students. You're actually getting a lot of the content and a lot of the information in the student notebook itself. So there are interactive pages, there are pages where you're writing, but there's also a lot of pages of reading. And with the older student, maybe they can read it out loud or maybe you can read it out loud to them. You can see how it works for your family. But there is an, a farm story that's going on and it's a farm visit that's happening and it's a continuing story throughout the year that ties in the topics that your children are learning about. So you read about two pages of a farm story 
and can discuss that with your child. They have Creation Corner. So here we're talking about sustainable, sustainable farming, some different practices, building our vocabulary, understanding different ideas. We have that. Then we have our poetry recitation as we're practicing. Um, as we're going through this unit, you can be practicing this poetry, this poem, sorry. So as you go through the unit, you're practicing that poem. Then vocabulary, writing the definition for each of the vocabulary terms. You could come up with your own definition as a family, or you can look them up in the dictionary and teach dictionary skills. Hey, homeschoolers always be learning. Uh, and then there's a notebooking narration page that includes an invitation to draw and to write. And then a little bit more information. Like I said, this is meaty. This student notebook is meaty. This is still part of unit one. Look, continuing to learn about agroecology, continuing to learn about what these concepts are, crop rotation, companion planting. Then you have your nature elements. They give you some options on what yellow wildflower you might be able to find locally to you. So learning about a few of them, I bet a lot of us could find dandelions. That's the nice, easy one. <laughs> um, so you have that, and then they introduce you to your project. And the project is one you work on for quite a long time. They also have a free template and a video included that you can see on how to get started on painting a phenology wheel over time. Then we get to unit two. So again, it follows that exact same pattern. You start with your farm story. So maybe you read the farm story one day, maybe you do creation corner and your vocabulary the next day. If you're doing four days, you could do narration the third day and read this info the fourth day, depending on how you want to break it up in your unit. So a lot of the content is there in the student notebook. Then I also wanted to give you a glimpse at a few more pieces that come as part of the downloads. These are the vocabulary cards for Spanish. And they have as well a notebook for copy work for these memory statements. So this is the print version. They also have a cursive version as well. And they have these for the level three or level one. I chose the level two statement to print out for you here. So if you um, want to be incorporating more tracing copy work as part of your science, you can do this and they can really practice spelling some of those long words, sustainable and agricultural. And then of course we have the memory statement cards with beautiful images right here. And they have one of those for each of the 18 units. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them down below in the comments. I will answer you as best as I can. And you can head to the link to check out the product listing on Gentle and Classical's website. Right now, this is only available in a digital downloadable format, uh, but it's pretty easy to print. I was printing on my EcoTank printer, which is pretty new, but I am loving it. Uh, and I will see you next time for more nerdy homeschool videos. Bye.